Hello, uh, my name is Kevin and this is the Love Decanters channel. Today I'm going to talk about uh, Georgian Decanters uh, by B. Edwards of Belfast. Um, yeah, I'm quite interested in Irish glass. It's a bit... Mm, it's a bit off-piste in, in a way. Um, how can I describe it? So for, for, for you... For glass in the UK, the thing about Irish glass is that quite quite a bit of it, from that period, you can identify where it was made. Some of it you can't. Some of it you can't even tell if it's really Irish or not. But some of it you can go, oh yeah, even though it's not marked, you could that enough of it has been marked to know uh, whether where it was made and what periods it was made, etc. So that makes it interesting in in the UK because a lot of UK glass. You don't know where it's from, especially when you're going back into sort of like the 1700s and early 1800s. It, it's it's difficult. Um, and um, of the Irish glass, um, B. Edwards of Belfast is my favourite because I lived in Belfast for several years. And um, yeah, so and um, and when I was a kid or a teenager, uh, Ulster Museum was. Yeah, this is this is a bit weird now. Um, Ulster Museum was one of my places favorite places to hang out um, at lunchtime at school so yeah it, it's 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 got a connection with me so yeah I am interested in it also um, I have shared the glass I have with Ulster Museum and and they've confirmed some of it they're dubious of and some of them that they're, they're quite um, sure of so what I will do with the glass that I've got I will show it um, most dubious first and then through to the last ones I'll show you where I'm. They were certain, so I'm certain. And they're in the books as well, so I will show you book references for the ones that I, where I have book references for them. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy this, um, and I'll get on and start showing you um, some books and um, the glass that I have. So if you are in, have an academic interest in the glass makers in Ireland, this is the book to get. Glass making Ireland. It's not great for identifying actual pieces. Oh, by John Hearn, um, I should say. Um, it's not great for actually identifying your glass because there's not that many pictures in here. Um, some of the pictures that it does have, though, are different. So, yeah, it's worth having just to pick out a few odd things. And, yeah, it has a whole chapter on Northern glass making in Northern Ireland, it says here. 1750 to 1914 and here we go here's um it says bally edwards this is the maker we're interested in um there's a whole pile of them and this is why where things get difficult because there's a whole pile of them um yeah so anyway edwards 1780 to 1826 so yeah this is early glass and um i will um show you what i've got now. So this is the first piece I'm, I'm going to show you and it's the least likely. Um, the reason I'm showing it is because it's got two rings and this is one of the distinguishing features of um, B. Edwards of Belfast is two neck rings so it's not very common to see two neck rings and and also B. Edwards of Belfast some of the earlier ones are supposed to have bladed neck rings and these are bladed. Can you see the rings are not round, they actually are kind of triangular shaped with an edge on them and um, those are called bladed rings. And also, this is a bit weird in that you have these panels, normally these are associated with later glass coming in sort of like post-1810, um, but the base has got quite a deep kick in it and that's usually associated with, or even though it's polished, that's usually associated, associated with earlier glass with broken uh, pontal. So it's a bit of a strange mix, this, this um, decanter. But um, yeah, it's, it might be, it might not be. It's probably on the less likely side. I didn't get a stopper with it, but early, early de uh, Irish decanters, quite often the stoppers are not fitted so this was never fitted for a stopper it's just completely smooth like a carafe um, 
if I show you a stopper here that I have, this is quite small by the way, so you can see my hand on it. Um, so I have this stopper here, and this is what Irish stoppers were like quite often. So something like that will just drop in there and just sit there like that. And it just hangs by its own edge there on the top of the bottle. Um, this didn't come with this, but it fits quite nicely. So I kind of leave it in here just so it kind of looks a bit more right. I don't know. It may have had, because it's got these panel cuttings, polish pontal, it may have had a, a better stopper than this. That may have just hung there like this, but may have had some cutting on and polishing it, like a um, cop bullseye or something. Because it usually bullseye is associated with slimmer neck rings. And this pouring lip being small is usually associated with earlier glass. So, yeah, there's a strange number you're going sort of like post-1810, this looks early, this pouring lip looks early, bladed lips, uh, rings earlier. So, yeah, strange mix this is. Um, but, yeah, not sure. So the first book I'm going to show you, it's um, the Phelps Warren Irish Glass book. I really read this book. Um, it's a bargain. Um, and, a, and a necessity if you want to collect Irish glass. Um, and the first picture is a beard as a Belfast. And as you can see, it's, it's got a similar shape to that one I was showing you with the two bladed rings, um, but with no cutting, um, lauded base. Um, yeah, there's a couple more. These are beard was a Belfast as well bladed rings but these are different shapes so yeah less likely so here's the next decanter i'm going to show you again you can see it's got the two rings um it has uh, a molded uh, comb molded base which is a very distinctive irish feature um and it's done the irish way let me i'll show you what i've described as the irish way um i'll pull this to you you can see it's got these ribs around the outside, then it's got like a clear area, and then the pontal in the middle. This pontal is polished, and you've got this here. This one has got this shallow cutting. Um, the rings are a bit strange though. They've got these, they're not annulated, they've got like a double ring um, for the two rings. The um, the stopper is an uncut bullseye stopper and unfinished. It it fits quite nicely. It came with the decanter. Um, it kind of feels about right, I think. Um, yeah, nice cutting here. This is not in any of the books. It has got two rings. Um, this cutting is not usual. Um, so... It might be, but Beard with the Belfast, it might not be. Because really the only thing that's saying Beard with the Belfast, the Belfast is the fact that it's got two rings. Okay, so this is this one. I don't have any book references for this. So here's the next one I'm going to show you. Um, this one is actually the first Irish decanter I bought ever. And um, I will show you how it is. So, yeah, this has got two bladed rings. Um, it's got this, I wouldn't say it's scale cut, I don't know what you call this. This rugby, and you see this, I've seen this on other Irish glass. Then you've got this husk pattern, which is a very distinctively Irish. Um, see this on a lot of Irish glass and then then you've got the comb molding and it's done in the my Irish way with the around the edge then the plain section and then it's got broken pontal um, I don't know what shape this you'd call this it's not quite tapered might be called shouldered um, the stopper is a little bit loose this is what came with it it seemed the wear marks on it seemed to sit with where you can see there's like a little polished bit in there and that seems to correspond with the 
polish bit here. So it is loose, but it, it seems like it's been with it a long time. Um, so um, this is called a lunar cut disc. Um, yeah, and this is not usual for Irish glass. So if that's the bit that makes me suspicious of it, but um, but it does seem to the, the wear on it matches up with the bottle. So yeah, it might be right. Might be right. Yeah, I'm always you always have to be once you get back into the Georgian periods, you always have to be um, a bit more dubious of the stoppers. The wear is right, even if I'm going. I've not seen the other Irish decanters with that, with that stopper. There's another one in the Phelps Warren book. This one's got those double rings like that, that but the decanter's so different. It, it kind of, yeah, it's two rings and they kind of put these doubles, but the rest of the decanter is very different. So here's another decanter. So this one might or might not be, it has got three rings. Yes. However, one of my book references says it might be Belfast. And um, yeah, so that's why I'm including it here. The, the rings are unusual. They're squared rings. This is not very usual. Stoppers, lovely discs with a little etch pattern there you can see. It's another one, it's not cut to fit, it just sits in there, sits quite nicely, but not but not tight. And then it's a very pretty stopper, it's got the initials of the original owner, and it's got this meander with stars on the other side. What's nice is you can see this little pattern here, and it's kind of emulated on the stopper, this little sprig. And then you've got a little sprig on the stopper as well. So that may, makes me feel, yeah, the stopper's right. The same. Although there's actually very little of the thing. It's, it's yeah, it's done Irish style with a broken pontle as well. And look at all that wear. Look at that. That's what you want to see on your circa 1800 decanters. That kind of wear. So yeah, this is a lovely, it's not a big decanter, but it's it's really quite lovely. And um, so I will show you the book. I think it's in the Andy McConnell um, decanter's book. I will show you that. And also I'll show you another reference with um, square rings from Belfast as well. So I have here um, Andy McConnell's first the decanter book. It's called The Decanter and Illustrated the History of Glass from 1650. Andy McConnell. Um, yep, it's worth getting this book. And um, what I'm looking at. Yeah, so the first one I'm going to look at is this one here. So this one in the here he tells you is possibly Belfast or Cork and um, this one only has two rings it's got the same meander can you see and initials in stars three sprigs on the disc stopper plain disc stopper just the same yeah the shape is also very similar to, to that one so apart from the fact that um, he's got two bladed rings it's very like all of this is the same this is the same same kind of stopper yeah um, and he's saying possibly Belfast so yeah so now we're into slightly more certain territory here so um, yeah this is a kind of classic the edge of the Belfast. I've got an exact reference for this. Um, it's not. It's not the one in the book, but um, the cutting, uh, the or the engraving on it is pretty close to identical. This style, and um, 
And you can see it's got this like little fuzzy effect on it. Yeah. And um, it's got, if I can get to it, where's the owner's initials? I'm missing it somewhere. I'm going too fast for my own good. There they are. So we've got the original owner's initials. We've got um, two uh, feathered rings. This is one of the standards. The stopper's interesting in that it has like a like a bit of a leak, glass leak on one side. So you've got this. Can you see? So the way these are made is that they basically have a, like a pair of pincers with this pattern on them, and they put the piece of glass in and they squidge it between it, and it makes this shape. And there's no cutting involved. It's got you know soft edges. Um, and there's no cutting involved, it's just like made to a certain shape and then broken off. And you can see the bottom's just broken off like that. So, yeah, this this is interesting because you'll see something in, in the next one. So, yeah, I'm comfortable this is Beard with the Belfast. Um, Aussie Museum seemed to think it was. One of our books really confirmed that it is as well. So I'm happy with this one. Um... Yeah, the thistles means that the probably the owner owners were Scottish immigrants from to Northern Ireland and would be Protestant. So yeah, there's there's a bit of that in there. So um, and you're going to see more of that kind of thing on another decanter. Here we are, still with Phelps Warren, and um, yeah, so. This is not exactly the same pattern um, with the thistles, but when you look at it very closely, ooh, can I get it closer? Yeah, there we go. The way it's done looks to be this with this furry furriness to it. I'm calling it um, looks to be the same engraver, uh, and the way you know the sh leaf shapes and everything are as close as you're going to get. Back with the original Andy McConnell book. Here we go. Here's a one with the. Um, this one is listed as Belfast, and it's got the same uh, furry thistles as the other one. So yeah, that's close to the one that I have. Apart from this, it's got a waffle stopper, and mine has that um, kind of slightly skew if. Um, pressed bullseye. So I have here the um, monster book, The Decanter Ancient and Modern by Andy McConnell. I'll need to see if I can get it open without destroying everything. Here we go. So, so the first reference in here I'm going to show you is this, this one here, which again be Edwards of Belfast, and it has those furry little um, thistles on it. Yeah, so that's really, um, and the same stopper. So that's as good as you're going to get there. So here's another one I've, I'm certain of. I've shared this with Museum of Ulster, and um, they were happy. I really like this decanter um, and I'll show you why it has one of the things there is a bit of squidging at the side um, like the other one not as bad but a bit which might mean that they had a, a faulty pincer at the work which allowed a bit of glass to escape so just a little bit there yeah so that's it has two feathered rings like the last one I just showed you. And this is what it's really got. It has um, the original owner's name, Martha Clement. Um, got a wheat up there. And that's, I've only ever seen um, one other decanter with a full name in a book. I'll show you it. Um, and uh, And that's a lady too. Uh, and it's got stars, it's got sprigs, and if you remember the other one where we're less certain that it's Beard's River Belfast, 
it had stars and sprigs as well triple sprigs like this so yeah so although there's not a hard reference for that small one with the square rings there's this little indication that seems to make it smell like the same engraver yeah and look at the furry way the the writing's done look at that like it's done on the one with thistles on um, with a kind of furriness to it yeah. and the same base broken pontal radiating lines clear bit same Irish style so yeah I really like this one and um, I will show you a reference for it back with um, Andy McConnell book and um, yeah I did mention that that there was one other decanter I've seen uh, with the lady's name on it it's not B. Edwards of Belfast one but um, actually has he got it tapered over no, it doesn't say where it, who's, who it's by. Um, it says Jane McMaster. So these are the only two that I've ever seen. The one I've got and this one here in this book that have got a full name on it. They're both ladies. I don't know if that's coincidental. I would have thought men's name would be more likely. So yeah, so that's... It's interesting that it's both ladies. That's all. I'm back again. Um just noticed on this decanter something very interesting it has this this stopper this disc stopper it has the three sprigs like the other one does with the three sprigs on it which is this three sprig pattern so yeah very interesting it's like the way this is done it's like it's the same engraver so the B. Edwards of Belfast one that has got um, Martha Clement's name on it has the three sprigs. This one's got the three sprigs. The one with the squared rings has got the three sprigs. I, maybe I'm just conjecturing, but making stuff up. But yeah, or maybe I do know that the engravers weren't always working in the factories, and maybe they were all just taking their, their blank bottles off to the same people and getting them done. So here's the last one I'm going to show you. Um, it's a bit different. To the, other. the shape is very similar to the other two that I just showed you that we know of from Beard was a Belfast, um, but it has some other differences. I will show those to you now. So it has what's known as a waffle stopper. It's very loose. Um, it's, it's not really ground in properly. It just kind of sits at the top. But this is a classic stopper for this kind of bottle. It has what's known as annulated rings. Just two. And then, rather spectacularly, it has the Irish harp with the crown over it. Now, Museum of Ulster told me this is to commemorate the Act of Union of 1800. Um, so it kind of dates the decanter. And, um, yeah, there's not many of these made. Um, they were as excited to see it as me. Um, yeah, it's got the original owner's initials. Yeah, this is a proper piece. Um, you don't get many of these to the pound. It's got the moulding and the same base as well. Look, with the ridges round, radiating ridges, and then clear bit and the broken pontal in the middle. So yeah, this is um, yeah, it, Act of Union is um. The joining of Great Britain and um, the Kingdom of Ireland to create the United Kingdom. Yeah, so this is quite an important um, commemoration here.
and I will show you uh, a book reference for this as well. Uh, back with the um, original Andy McConnell book, and he also has here The Edwards of Belfast Decanter with the harp with the crown over it, Waffle Stopper, Two Rings. Um, this is, does he say it's marked engraved with that? He just says Edwards, he doesn't say it's marked as Edwards, but yeah, I mean, it's so like the one I have, and Ulster Museum have said um, Edwards, so. I'm very happy with that. I hope you enjoyed that. I will show you some of my um, favourite decanters. And um, yeah, and this is how it goes with um, old glass. You have to speculate. You have to try and cross-reference and look at different things. Ask people. Read books. Um, it's not easy. Um, Sometimes you've got stuff and you're going, yeah, I know exactly what this is. And other times you're going, I'm not sure. Even sometimes you're going, is this a copy or is it a not? You know, um, I have enough glass to um, do probably about three more videos on Irish glass. So, yeah, I don't know when I'll do them, but I will do three more. And, um, and I'll probably do another one on just on books and pamphlets and things that I've got my references just so that you can see um how i work things out and um yeah so i would like to thank also museum it was like a, a few years ago that i was having correspondence with them but they were more than happy to look at my pictures and and give us an opinion so yeah I, and i will put a link to their website on here because yeah they're, they're good people and um, they were very nice to me um because yeah i'm just a nobody collector really i'm just here blabbing about glass and that's how it goes um so yeah i hope you enjoyed this and um i said i will be doing some more irish ones so please like and subscribe if you want to see those when i get to doing them and um yeah thank you very much for watching